What's up guys, if you haven't yet already seen the video where I test fitted the new wheels and tires that are going to be going on the Fox body, I'm going to leave a link in the description below so you guys can check that video out whenever you have some free time because they look sick, it completely changes the entire way that the car looks, so definitely go and check that out. But if you have already seen that video, then you guys probably remember me mentioning something about lowering the front of the car just a hair. I want to try to tighten up this gap between the tire and the fender. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna try to knock that out. I already checked the weather and it's supposed to be cloudy today, but it's not supposed to rain. So I'm hoping that the weather holds up and we can just knock everything out with no interruptions because typically that's not how it works and it likes to rain when I'm midway through the job, but it shouldn't be that difficult. We're gonna do one side at a time. We just gotta jack the car up, get the tire off, get the spring out, cut a coil off the spring and then put everything back together and we should be good to go. Now I know that's not the most desired way to go about lowering your car, but this is a budget build and to be honest with you guys, full suspension is just not in the budget right now. So we're gonna lower the car on a budget and by that I mean cutting a coil off the spring and I'm not sorry about it. I really don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal. It's an old Mustang and yeah, I don't really think it's gonna ride much different. It's gonna be a race car, so obviously eventually I do plan on putting full suspension in the car, but for now, we're just gonna send it and get her done. Before we jack up the car, I want to go ahead and take some measurements, and that way I'll give you guys a better idea of exactly how much lower the car gets by cutting one coil off the springs. And that way, hopefully, if you guys were considering doing the same thing or were a little bit hesitant about doing the same thing, um, hopefully this will make it a little bit easier for you guys to decide whether this is what you wanna do to your Fox body or not. But yeah, we're going to measure on this side because the other side, the tire is a little bit flat, so we'll get a better measurement on this side and then we'll re-measure once everything's put back together and the car's on the ground again. All right, so we're looking at like 26 and 5 eighths, 26 and 5 eighths. Getting a better look in here now, I'm thinking that all we're gonna have to do is remove this nut that holds um, the sway bar on. These two bolts that hold the shock to the lower control arm. Um, probably going to have to remove the caliper and suspend it, and then we'll be able to lower the lower control arm, and while doing that, we'll be relieving the pressure of the spring, and then the spring should come out, and we should be able to do what we need to do. So I'm hoping that's all. We're gonna have to do, but I guess we'll find out shortly. We're gonna start by removing the caliper. up here but what I did was before we got into this I went ahead and ran some zip ties so that way we can hold this up hopefully if I can get it the caliper is being held up and we're not putting any negative tension on the brake lines so next is going to probably be to disconnect the sway bar and then we can uh, go ahead and tackle the shock bolts. Well boys, the impact wrench failed so we're going uh, old school here with some good old leverage. So the first battle was fought and uh, we came out victorious. These two nuts that uh, are attached to the bolts that hold the shock to the lower control arm were way tighter than I would have wanted them to be. And it wasn't even like they were tight to just break loose. Once I broke them loose, they continued to be 
uh, a pain in the butt all the way through all of the threading but we got them out so I believe the next step is going to be to knock the bolts out and then we can lower the lower control arm I already got the jack underneath it with some pressure and then that should allow the spring to come loose so let's see what happens She's out boys, that was a little sketchy, but uh, she's out. Here we go. One coil. Now comes the fun part, putting everything back together. All right. She was giving me some trouble uh, trying to put her back in. So I'm using a little bit of ghetto engineering. I just put a tie, um, tie strap on there to compress the spring. And I'm hoping that I can get it to compress enough just to get it into where I need to get it. And it looks like
one side complete guys and it honestly dropped it a good amount that looks sick this right here is the face of an exhausted man not a defeated man because we got it done but I'm definitely exhausted Whew. Wow, that looks so good. I'm stoked. Can't really take measurements yet because like I said, this is the tire that's a little bit flat. So we're gonna have to wait until we get the other side done until we measure it and see exactly how much we lowered it. But I can already tell that it definitely lowered a good amount. So that's sick. Whew. I am probably going to go inside for a few minutes and cool off and regain my energy. And then uh, we'll come back out and we'll knock out the other side. All right, guys, we're back. I took a little break. I feel much better. You see my shirt is still completely drenched, but I went ahead and already got the car jacked up and the tire off of it. So the next step is going to be just like the other side. We have to take the bolt and I mean the nut off of the sway bar. Then we're going to remove the caliper. I already got the zip ties here ready to suspend it. And then uh, the shock bolts and nuts, which on this side I'm noticing now they are in the opposite orientation of the other side. So. Well, these aren't stock so obviously someone changed the shocks and when they did it they didn't put these bolts back the way that they're supposed to and i feel like this is the correct way because this is how they were on my sti with the bolt coming through towards the front and then the nuts go on but on the other side it was the opposite way and that side's already done and i am way too tired to take it all apart to redo it so when we put this one back together i'm just going to put it back together like that side so they're both the same and not uh uneven or not uneven but unmatching or whatever you know what i'm trying to say i'm going to do it so they're both the same on both sides so also quick side note check that out japan It's a frustrating business. Success. But it's never that easy. Alright, I got... Alright guys, that lower bolt and nut right here put up another huge fight because the angle that it's at, I could not get a socket in there because it started to hit the back of the brake shield. So I had to do it opposite and loosen the bolt instead of loosening the nut. But uh, we got it out, so now we just gotta knock out the two bolts and we should be able to drop the lower control arm. Dang, that is so sketchy. <laughs> but effective, we got it. Before we cut this other spring, there's just something I wanted to mention and talk to you guys about real quick because I don't see a lot of other YouTubers talking about it. Um, and if you plan on building a project car or if you are currently building a project car, there's certain situations where you're going to need um, power tools, certain power tools to get the job done properly and efficiently. And odds are you might not have that power tool in your garage or have access to that power tool. Perfect example is this angle grinder. I did not have an angle grinder before I bought the Mustang and I needed one to get multiple different things done on the car. And I'm a fan of Dewalt. And if I were to go buy a Dewalt angle grinder, it would have been like 200, $220 and that can add up quick when you have to buy a couple or a few different power tools. For instance, this angle grinder, I spent like 20, $24 at Walmart. Whereas, like I said, I would have spent over $200 if I would have got a D1 one. So that just saves a bunch of money that you could use to buy parts for the car instead of not wasting it. I don't want to say wasting it because high-end power tools are worth it, 
but um you might not have the budget or you might not have the money to spend an extra four or six hundred dollars on power tools plus the amounts of money that you're throwing into parts because it is a lot um, if you aren't building a project car it adds up quick and you spend a lot of money even on something like this which is a budget build so any dollar you can save uh, in my opinion goes towards the car and that's much more worth it to me than having three or four top-of-the-line power tools um, eventually I will probably replace these tools with Dewalt just because I really like Dewalt tools but as of right now like I said I'm just dumping all of my money into the car and parts so anywhere you can save money really helps out so I just wanted to let you guys know that that there is another option you don't have to buy top-of-the-line power tools to get a certain job done you can go ahead and just get by by getting some power tools at Walmart or Harbor Freight so with that being said uh, I guess let's cut this other spring and put everything back together Coil numero dos. All right, guys, we got the spring back in. I didn't film it. I stopped filming because it actually took me like 30 to 45 minutes to uh, get the spring back in there. It was just being super complicated and did not want to work with me. So uh, I battled it for like the last 45 minutes, but we got it in there. But uh, once it started giving me trouble, I kind of turned off the camera and then got, got, got kind of upset while I was working on it. So I just wanted to get it done and I forgot to turn the camera back on. But uh, turned it on now. So we got the spring back in, the bolts are in. We still have to put the nuts on the back of the bolts that hold the control arm to the shock. Uh, I have to tighten up the sway bar, put the caliper back on, tighten that up, and then we'll be good to lower the car. And I don't know if you guys can hear it in my voice, but I am completely over it at this point. The sun is beating right on me there's no shade i can't get away from it i'm super hot and just tired and i just want to finish this so i can take a shower and probably just go to sleep because i need a nap that uh <laughs> that this spring has really uh frustrated me but I tried to keep my cool and i kept pushing and we got it in so now we're just going to keep on moving forward and get this all buttoned up it is really really hot outside I thought this was going to be like a real easy job too. It turns out not that easy. <sighs> Sorry for the heavy breathing guys, but like when I tell you guys I'm exhausted, I'm not just doing it for uh, the sake of the video. Like, I'm literally tapped out, guys. <sighs> Shit. Almost a joke how hot it is outside. I'm just sitting here. I feel myself baking. I got Arizona pulling up. What's going on? Still recording, yeah. Sorry about that guys, Amazon pulled up. I had to receive the package. I 
I think it looks good. It's definitely sitting way lower. Oh, we're about to measure it in a second. And I think that the uh, the front uh, wheels and tires that I have that are going to be going on this sit a little bit taller than this. So they should sit a little bit more tucked up into the fender as well. And it'll look even better. But let's uh, get the measuring tape real quick. Ah, what was it before? I don't even remember. It was like 26 and 5 eighths. And now we're looking at like 26 so 5 eighths of an inch is what it dropped I don't know if this has to settle I don't know if it'll uh, settle and then be a little bit lower but as of right now it looks like it dropped 5 eighths of an inch so it might it might settle and drop a little bit lower I'm not too sure but regardless like I said it's definitely lower it's a uh, it's a visible like you could tell visibly that it's lower in the front and like I said I think the new wheels and tires sit a little bit taller than those so it will look even more tucked I'm stoked I'm super tired I really can't wait to see how it looks like yeah it's definitely lower I don't know if you'll be able to tell on camera like this but like I can see that the nose is just like dipped down so that's super cool yeah you can see it on camera guys the front is super low hell yeah that looks sick I am beyond exhausted guys, can't even really tell but my shirt is like, it's just nasty, it's crusty because all the sweat, like I literally had it soaking wet earlier and now the sweat is kind of dried and I'm sweating on top of the sweat, it's just, it's just not a good time, take my word for it, it's just not a good time. This sun is absolutely ridiculous but that's going to be it for this video guys, if you have any questions or things that you guys would like to see me do to the fox body just drop a comment below and most of the time i read them i don't respond to all of them because there's a lot but uh i do read them so just let me know what you guys think in the comments below i'm pumped i think it looks good it was a lot of work i will put that out there it was a lot more difficult than i expected it to be but like i said guys this is the face of an exhausted man not a defeated man because we got it done and now that it's over I feel a little bit better because I was definitely super aggravated uh, like amongst doing this side because it gave me a lot of trouble but we got it done I'm pumped that's all I could ask for really uh, I think the next video is probably going to be straight piping the fox body we're gonna cut the mufflers off it and just weld some straight pipes in there and uh, yeah it'll be a good time so I hope you guys enjoyed the video hope you guys think the fox body looks sick with the front lowered like that. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to hit the like button for me, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Be easy.